Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to mine Neoxa on a Windows 11 PC. If you have Windows 10, the steps are going to be exactly the same. So let's take a look. Before we begin, I'm going to take a look at the three major steps that we're going to be following right now. So the first choice is to install the core wallet, and that's what we're actually going to do in this video. But if you're planning on selling the coins as you receive them, you can set up a web wallet using Trade Ogre. I'll make sure I link that down below. The second step is to download and install Gminer. That is the mining tool that we're going to be using today in this video. You can use other miners. I'll make sure I also link those down below. So when you're looking for a miner, just make sure it's compatible with your GPU and the KPAL algorithm. And the third part is the pool. We're going to be using Zerg pool in this example. There's a few other pools that I can also list that you can use, but these are the ones I'm going to be using right now because they're straightforward and easy to use. So let's go through the steps. So the first thing we're going to do is click on the create wallet icon over here. And you have a few options down here. We have the Windows download, the Mac, the Linux, and then we have the ARM wallet, which is coming soon. I'm going to go ahead and download the Windows GUI wallet and it brings me over to the GitHub page. And if I scroll down a bit here, we have all the wallets laid out. We're going to be using the 64 bit version of Windows. So go ahead and click on that to download. Okay, and once this has been downloaded, you can go ahead and click on the zip file. Okay, we just open up that zip file and here's the executable. You just have to double click on that to launch it. We're getting a security prompt from Windows. So you just have to click on the more info and then run anyway. And now it wants to select a location to store the files. Now you can leave the directory as a default one or you can select a custom one. In this example, I'm gonna be leaving the default one. So I'll be clicking on okay. I'm just gonna minimize my other windows over here. And now it wants to import a recovery phrase. Now this is if you already have a wallet set up. If you don't have one, you can go ahead and click on the generate button and you get a phrase right over here that'll populate. What you wanna do is make sure that you have this recorded in a secure location. Never give out your phrase to anybody. This is your single line of defense to unlock your wallet and get your crypto. So you definitely wanna make sure that you keep this in a secure location. So once we have that generated, we can go ahead and click on the import button. All right, so I'm going to put in my new password. I'm going to go ahead and click on confirm. This is to encrypt my wallet. It's successfully set. Click on OK. And now it's syncing with the blockchain. This portion might take some time. It doesn't happen automatically. It says I'm 15 weeks behind. So you're going to let this run in the background. It does take some time for it to sync. So what I'm going to do is click on the hide button over here. OK, and I got a prompt over here from Windows Defender. And it wants to make sure that I'm allowing access to it, which is something that you want to do. You want to make sure that this goes through your firewall. So we can click on the allow access button. We're back at the main screen right now, and that is pretty much it for the wallet itself. Now we're gonna go over to the next step, which is installing Gminer. And if you don't mind, please smash that like button. It's gonna help me grow, and I truly appreciate that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be downloading Gminer. So I'm gonna go over to GitHub, and I'll make sure I link this down below. The latest version is 3.05. Uh, we're looking for the Windows 64-bit version, so here it is. We're gonna go ahead and click on that, and it's gonna start downloading the file. I'm gonna go ahead and open up that folder. So here we are in the downloads. I'm just gonna right click on it and extract it. And here's the download path that we're gonna be downloading and it's just in the same folder right now. Okay, so here is all the files that we have. Um, I'm just gonna minimize this window so it's out of the way. The closest batch file that we have to Neoxa is gonna be the Ravencoin batch file. So we're gonna go ahead and right click on this and we're gonna select edit. And we're just gonna be editing the information here for the miner. So I'm going to move it down here at the bottom. We have the miner.dxe file, which is the miner right over here. That's what it's going to be executing. Next is the algorithm, which is KPAL. So we'll be leaving that as is. What we're going to have to do is modify the server and the user. So the server is going to be the Zerg pool server information that we'll be getting in just a moment. And the user, this is going to be the wallet address. And this is the wallet address from your core wallet or the wallet that you're choosing to use. So here's the main pool for Zerg pool. I'll make sure I link that down below in the description. We're going to go over to the section over here called command line generator. Uh, let me just scroll down so you can see that clearly. And in the first section, it wants the region. So the region that you're going to be selecting is going to be the one that's closest to you. For me, it's North America. But if you're in a different area like Europe or Asia, you want to select one of those servers. So I'm going to go ahead and select North America. And then next, it's going to be the algorithm. So the algorithm that we're using is Kapow. So I'm going to be looking that for that in here. And here it is. I'm just going to select that. And then the currency that we're going to be using, we're going to look for Neoxa there. Neox is the one. And then we have the target coin. So we have the option right over here to select it. And it auto populates over there. 
and then your wallet address. So for your wallet address, I'm gonna leave that blank for now and I'll show you why because we're just copying and pasting from here. We're not actually gonna use the full configuration file. The worker name I can just put in uh, CryptoJarCJ01. And as we're typing everything in, it's auto-populating everything that we're gonna need to copy into our batch file. There is just a few things that we're gonna need, which is basically the server address and the coins that we're gonna be copying over and then we're gonna be putting in our wallet address as well. So I'm gonna switch back over to my batch file. And so the first section is for the miner, which we're gonna be leaving as is. The algo is KPAL, we'll be leaving that as is. The server address, so we're gonna be removing this full section right over here, right up to the port number, and I'm gonna delete that. And then I'm gonna be taking the server from this website, from KPAL over to the port number, like so, and I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna bring it back over into the batch file and then I'm gonna paste it. Next is gonna be my wallet address. So I'm gonna be deleting this user, which is the wallet address right over here. I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna jump over into my wallet and paste it in. Okay, and so here is my core wallet and I'm just gonna be giving it a label. I'll just type in minor over here, amount I can leave blank and the message I'm gonna be leaving blank. I'm just gonna click on request payment and all I need to do from here is copy the address. So I click on the copy the address button and I can go ahead and close it. You can see it's populated here and that's all I need from the wallet is the wallet address so I can just minimize out of here. And then back into my batch file, I'm gonna be selecting it and uh, just after user, I'm gonna be pasting in my wallet address and here it is. So I'm just gonna be adding in the coins now. So it's gonna be dash dash and then pass and then we're gonna be highlighting the coins right over here in the worker ID. So I'm just gonna copy this, then space, and then paste it in. So we've just taken that last section. You can see that the configuration file is actually different from what we're showing over here. These are just the requirements that we're fulfilling for Gminer. That's pretty much it. We just have to save this right now. The name of this is Ravencoin. I'm gonna be changing the name right now just so it reflects the miner that we're using. So I'm gonna go up to File and then Save As, select all files, and then I'm gonna be changing the batch name of this miner to Neoxa. Okay, so there we go. So the name of it has changed. I can go ahead and save it and we're done. So we can close out of this window and I can switch back over to my miner. We have the new batch file that I just created it over here. And all I have to do now to execute this is to double click on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on the batch file and it's gonna start running. There we go. And there you go, it's just loading up, it's connecting to the server and it's gonna begin mining right away. And that's how you do it. Just a few steps to get up and running. And that's how you mine Nyoxa on a Windows 11 PC. What you're probably gonna to wanna to know is how to see the status and how much you're being paid out. I'm just gonna switch back over here to Zerg Pool. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is go up into the wallet. In the wallet section, it already has one of my older wallets in here right now where I was testing it out. It does take a few minutes for all this to populate. So if you immediately put in your wallet address when you're searching for it, it may not show for, I don't know, about 15 minutes or so. So give it some time. Once it does show up, you'll be able to scroll down and then your statistics will start to populate here. And then you'll be able to find out your payout information. There is a minimum balance that's required, which is right over here. This does update. I believe this changes from time to time. So you wanna make sure that you're looking at that. So you're not going to see a balance showing up in your wallet immediately. You have to first make sure that you hit the threshold before it pays out and it pays out periodically. And it usually gives the statistics of that information right over there. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please smash that like button. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. If you're looking for more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you for your support and I'll catch you on the next one.